Hey everybody, this is McGarren Flack. Going to do a demonstration video on how to paint the portrait, the face. Now this is just one method or approach that I would do to be able to draw a portrait. There's lots of different ways to draw a portrait, but this is just one. So if you don't want to follow this way, you don't have to, but it is going to be a good instructional video. So first step that I'm going to take is figure out where the top of the head is going to be and the bottom of the head is going to be. So somewhere around there. And then I'll create a general ellipse on where that head is located. And look at where the neck comes into play for that head. It's a little bit over more like that. And figure out where the eyes are going to be. And the nose. And the mouth curves back and around, somewhere on there. It's a little bit lower. And then the hairline. And if the eyes are coming back here, the ear is going to be a little bit higher than the eyes because it curves around. Same thing with the nose, it curves around towards the back. So I'm going to put the bottom of that ear. And draw just like the Barg copy drawing section. I'm going to use straight lines to figure out where all these proportions are located. This is my general block in to make sure that it's going to fit on my page where I want it to be. This is going to be our hair. And if I draw a line from the shoulder, it should hit the chin. So if I go from the chin over, that's where my shoulder height's going to be. So now I'm just going to use a series of straight lines to figure out where these bigger shapes are located. Okay, now I feel like I've given her just maybe a little bit too much face. I think I need to shrink the face, so I'm going to double check my proportions. And I'll do that by measuring the width of the face in relationship to the height of certain landmarks in the face. So here from the chin to the top of the eyebrow, I have is the same size from the edge of the face to her hairline here where the ear starts. So I'm going to double check my proportions and make adjustments between length of the nose, width of the nose, mouth, where is it in relationship to the eyes, ears, neck, everything. I noticed that the model's jaw that I drew was a little bit too wide, so I made that a little bit more narrow. I also noticed that the jaw is half the height of the head. So I have the right height of the head in relationship to the width of the face. Now I'm going to compare facial features and make adjustments to them. So here I have lined up, the edge of the mouth lines up with the iris is what I'm noticing. I'm also not noticing the tear duct is lining up with the nose vertically. This part of the iris lines up with the nose and this part of the eye cuts into the center of that nose. I also am noticing that this mouth needs to shift over just a little bit and the cheek needs to come out just a little bit. So the mouth is shifting over. 
So you use your vertical plumb lines here to determine where things are sitting. And that's why I'm doing a three quarter view to kind of show you the difference on how to line up all of these proportions. I'll do the same thing with the ear. So if I were to draw a horizontal line from the nose, where does it meet the ear? And the eye should go in towards the middle of it and the eyebrow will go towards the top of it. So I'm pretty close to where all my proportions need to be. It's just a matter of refining the shapes a little bit more. I'm not gonna spend too much time refining all of these shapes. I just wanna get a good general proportion so that I know what it's going to look like. I also notice that the angle change of the jaw here is in between the mouth and the nose. So if I just change that and soften it up a little bit more, that will make more sense. Same thing with this part of the hair it needs to come in just a titch more because there's less space over there comes out and then the hair thing needs to come up more. The neck starts right behind the earlobe here. So I need to make sure that that is small enough and that the neck is long enough as it starts to transition into the trapezius. All right, and then we have other muscles like the sternocleidomastoid that comes down here, but I won't get into that. Now I'm just gonna get into some of this detailed stuff, make it a little bit more accurate and refined. So here's a really important part. Here on the eye, the eyeball comes out and around. It doesn't touch the top of this eyelid. The top of the eyelid wraps around the back of the eyeball, kind of like that. Same thing with the bottom. The bottom eyelid wraps around towards the front. So I need to show that change that the eyeball does touch a little bit of that background. Then you have the socket, the bony landmark that sits on top of this eyelid and it comes out and up. The bottom eyelid kind of tapers down in and then you have the cheekbone that kind of wraps around the backside of it. So I hope you can see those subtle changes. Also notice I'm still using the side of my pencil. I haven't, I haven't totally committed to these shapes yet. I'm just trying to find my way around these various shapes. Another thing, when drawing the iris um, and the retina of the eye, look at where it comes in at the top of the eyelid. And right here, it looks to be about halfway. It kind of shoots out to the center of the um, retina there, and then it angles down in. So it gets a curve, but it's, it's not straight down. It's almost like the curve is being covered up by skin in the front. It's the same thing over here on this eye. If you look closely, it comes out a little bit. 
So the center of the circle is about here, and then it tapers in, and same thing with on this side, it tapers up. So I did those with a series of straight lines, but created a nice little curve. Using straight lines will help you find those shapes more accurately. So I'd highly recommend doing that. Now, here the eyebrow comes in a little bit further than the tear duct. So if I were to draw a vertical line, that's where the eyebrow comes in in relationship to the tear duct. Over here, the eyebrow comes in right above the iris. So that's where the eyebrow starts to come in. Now that I have these general proportions, I'll break down the shapes of the ear and then start to work in value. I will not touch value or create value until I know my proportions are pretty good. Now looking at this, if I, had to, if I were to go from the jaw here and go vertical, I can see that the peak of the head is right above that jaw. It's not over the eye. The peak is not over here. It's not over the ear. It's right above the jaw. So the rest of this needs to be cut back down. Okay, now that I have most of the proportions figured out, I'm feeling okay with it. I feel like it looks a lot like her. So I'm going to move on to values now. So I want to divide the light shapes from the shadow shapes. And this is a pretty soft light shape, shadow shape transition, but I know that shadows are existing. So I'm going to kind of put in those shadow shapes that I'm seeing so that I can simplify it for myself a little bit more. Okay, now I have figured out where the shadow shapes are. I've outlined them. Remember, the shadow shapes, I've defined it by the core shadow that um, will be the defining line. So core shadow on this shape, cast shadow on this shape. And I'm gonna just fill in with a flat value all the core or all the shadow shapes. And then I will put in a flat value for all of the light shapes. I'll do cross hatching. You can kind of see how I'm gonna cross hatch it because I wanna make the values very subtle. I don't wanna to go too dark. I don't wanna keep it too light. And I wanna make it uh, solid. So no scratchiness. Here's a really important thing. Make sure that when you are putting these shadow shapes together that you're including the sclera. The sclera is the white of the eye. If I look at the sclera here in relationship to the light value of her flesh tone, the sclera is darker than the light of the flesh. So it is a part of the shadow shapes. So I'm going to draw them, draw the value in there as if it were a shadow shape. Now this whole time I've been using a 2B charcoal to get all of my light values. I'm gonna put in a light value over all of her skin tone and the head cover. And then I'm gonna to go to a darker charcoal and cut in these darker values so that I can see the change and the contrast between the dark values and the light values. Thank you. 
So I want to try to keep these shapes flat for as long as possible so that I can see the shape. As soon as I start to turn the form on it, then some of the shapes get lost and I have no idea what I'm looking at. So for me, I try to keep them as flat as I possibly can and darken the values as I go. Okay, so something I'm noticing, the tip of my pencil is, needs to be sharpened. So I'm going to go sharpen it and come back and continue to work on the values. All right, now I'm going to continue on with this nice sharp tip pencil. Work on more of the values. I can tell that some of these values need to get darker. So I'm going to push them a little bit darker with this 4B. I don't want to get too dark. Um, so I'm going to put in a value that is going to be my darkest dark. And when I'm looking on this, the darkest dark to me is right here in the neck. So I'm going to get my 6B pencil, um, my softest pencil, charcoal, and see if I can get my darkest value there. All right, so now I know that is my darkest value that I want to go. I don't really want to go much darker than that. So I need to bring the value of everything else close to this darkness in the neck. And then I'm going to start to make my way up and make these other dark values so that I know where my value transitions are going to sit. So I know that the neck is darker than the jaw. The jaw is darker than the cheek. The cheek is darker than the forehead. So I'm going to build up from dark to light. All right, now to draw a mouth. Students ask me all the time, how do you draw a mouth? First, you have the top of the lip and then the bottom of the lip. You saw how I had that outline before. But now I'm starting to do values and I'm focusing on where are the darkest values so that I can make the form turn. The form turns this way so I can make the form turn. The form turns this way and this way. So it comes down and then bulges out and comes down again. So anything that comes down is gonna be a darker value, like these two parts under the lip and the top lip. And this bottom lip is gonna be a lighter value, especially right at the edge where a amount of light is just skimming across it. So I'm softly building up those values, I mean, darkening them up. It, the lip comes in where they meet and then they come into this little edge where 
skin overlaps the top lip and where the bottom lip meet. Sometimes there's this nice little lighter value section that's sitting right here. I'm gonna kind of darken it down a little bit more so it becomes more subtle. But the more you can make the lips subtle in value, the more it's going to look realistic. You don't wanna do these dark lines shooting throughout the whole entire face or lips or whatever proportions you're looking at. You wanna be subtle with it. Here, I wanna darken up a value just a little bit to show that there's a separation between the upper lip and the bottom lip. And here, I'm gonna bring this bottom lip out just a little bit and soften out that edge. Same thing with this top part that's coming in. And then here, it's just a little bit darker as it's turning the form. Now when creating value, the difference between value and a contour is a contour is a line that divides a shape. Value, you darken it and lighten it and have soft, subtle changes throughout the shapes. So it doesn't look like a cartoon. The other thing that I'm doing that you can't see on the video is I'm leaning back and I am trying to look at it from a distance and see what shapes are really popping out, which shapes are more subtle. So this upper lip needs to be a little bit more subtle. And then there's this value that's coming in from the nair or the nose and it comes just out where it starts to hit the cheek. And there are darker values that are sitting here. So that's all I'm doing is trying to find where those darker values are in relationship to the lighter values and making very soft, subtle transitions between them. Now when drawing the eye, you can tell that I did the retina, I did the upper lid without drawing in the upper lid of the contour, at least. And here I'm just darkening in that value so that it looks like it curves in, it comes from a dark value and it curves out into a lighter value. And I'm really gonna soften up that edge because I want that form to turn I'm gonna bring it over here and soften out the upper eyelid on that side and also on this side, because there's just a little bit of light that's touching this part of the eyelid. So soften out those edges as they're coming in. Almost like it's, it, there's no detail. It's just because it's in the shadows. You want it to stay in the shadows, not pop out. So don't make it too contrasty. Same thing with the eyebrow. With the eyebrow, the darkest value is right here because that is touching the shadow edge. And then it gets lighter as it comes out across. You don't wanna make it outlined and too dark. You wanna make it more subtle, kinda of like a soft breath. Yeah, soft breath. Same thing with this other eye. When I put in the retina, Just gonna simplify that value, darken it down. I'm not gonna outline it and try to define it 
because I don't want it to look like a cartoon. I want it to look natural. So I'm going to let the value describe how natural it looks. Soften up the sclera a little bit more and then darken up this upper eyelid. And as for right now, I am liking what is going on with the eyes and the values and the shapes. So I'm gonna continue on and draw on the other values. Here it's a little bit too light, so I'm gonna darken that down. Same with some of the values in the nose. Now the nose, there's little lumps and stuff, and if you draw in these hard edged lumps, kind of like that, it's gonna really pop out. So you wanna soften out those edges and let the value start to describe the form as it's turning instead of using a line to describe how it's turning. The other thing, this is called the glabella on the skull. And this is a little bit darker in value compared to this because it's going away from the light and then the nose is coming out and catching the light. So I'm gonna come up here and darken up this value of the glabella. and see where this edge starts to happen, which it's about the edge of the iris, maybe a little bit lower than the iris. So here I know that I made that too dark, so I'm gonna do some touch-ups on these things that I made too dark. Now with hair and skin, you want to make sure that the hairline is soft. So here I'm just softening out the hairline so that it doesn't look so hard. If you have it hard edged like that, then it's gonna distract. So you wanna soften out those edges here. I'm drawing harder here and then lifting up and doing it more loose as it comes in towards the skin. That way it gives a soft transition from hair into skin and it doesn't look like it's cut out. Okay, so I feel like it's coming along pretty good. I need to go and sharpen my pencils some more. Now I'm just softening up the transition between the upper eyelid and the sclera. I don't, I want it to curve around, so I'm softening up the edge of that part and then also where the eyeball comes down just a little bit more. And I'm going to define the under part of the eyelid a little bit more by drawing in a line and soften out underneath that line a little bit more so that I get the effect that light is hitting on top of it and then there's no light on the under part.
Now with hair, remember to bring it in, soften out the transition as it goes in towards the skin. Here I'm just softening it out. Think of hair as a mass. You don't want to have the hair as uh, single lines or strands of hair because the hair turns and it reflects light differently. So it's actually going to change the look with each hair strand. So I'd recommend massing in hair shapes as opposed to drawing individual hairs. And that's what I'll demonstrate here is just drawing in the hair shape and I will also come down towards the bottom portion of the hair and describe how that is going to look. The other quality about hair is you need to make sure that it is soft edged. So here it's relatively soft over here, but if I just bring out a little bit of these lines, soft lines, then it really kind of gives it a softer feel as it's coming around the back there. And then this neck is in front of the hair, so it's going to be a harder edge. Same thing with this portion of the neck. It's going to be a harder edge because skin coming in front of the hair is going to show or describe as a harder edge. And then as it comes in here, it's going to be softer. So I'll just soften out some of this stuff, cut out some negative shapes in the hair so that it'll be more interesting. Here I'm just massing in those smaller shapes for the hair. Nothing too intense or too varying. I just want to get some hairs coming out to the side here to show that there's curl. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way it has turned out. So I kept things pretty subtle, but the shapes and proportions are relatively accurate. Like the nose, the eyes, the mouths, the ear, it looks like nose, mouths, eyes, and ear. Neck, the shoulder, the relationship to the shirt that she's wearing. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way it is right now. I'm gonna go in and clean up the drawing now with a hard edged eraser just to uh, make it pop out a little bit more so it doesn't feel as soft. The other thing is if you don't want to have all of this textural look to it, then make your drawing bigger. If you make your drawing bigger, the, the texture will look more subtle. The other thing is you could get a different type of paper if you want less texture. But this is charcoal drawing paper. It needs to have some type of tooth to it for the charcoal to be able to grab on. And um, yeah, so th those are two alternatives that you could do to uh, have a more smooth drawing. The other thing that you could do is you could smudge a drawing. Now for class purposes and learning how to apply value, I would not recommend smudging 
any drawing until you know how to use value to describe form with just freehand. So smudging is, it can be beneficial. It can be really nice if used correctly, um, but that's a totally different topic and a totally different day to learn that. So anyways, I'm just gonna finish this off. Okay, there's the portrait. Drew all the facial features, threw in some value on everything, did a little bit of texture design in her head wrap, whatever it's called. Um, got some additional information, her earring, her roundness of the shoulder, the shadow versus the light shape of the neck, also the face, so it's softly turning in form. Notice I have value everywhere. So I'll put in a couple of little highlights here in her earring and call it a day, but thank you for watching the whole entire video. Mm -hmm.